Recently, we filmed a funny road safety PSA in Arizona. Come along and see how we lit and filmed it. Oh, hello. <laughs> nice to see you today. I am a qualified uh, therapist in my office. Just kidding. This is a set and this is not a real room at all. This is the magic of filmmaking that I love so much. Fake rooms in fake places. Check this out. Come here. These walls are made out of wood. Here's the city. <laughs> There's no glass in the windows. Here's some of our gear. We're lighting this with aperture lights today. We have some stands. These are very important. And today, you are going to see how we light a set like this. Because this lighting with these lights on the ceiling, this does not look good. This looks stupid. And the artistry and talent that went into making this set deserves artistry and talent with lighting the set. We're going to give this a mood. So first in my priority list is this window. I want this window to look like a real window and real windows are super bright. So I want the light coming through this window to be super duper bright. What matters is the relationship between the brightness of the background and the room. I'm going to start with two aperture novas on the ground pointing up right here. All right, and here we go. Let there be light. These are the Aperture Novas. They are very bright and very soft. So I'm using them in this instance because I want soft light over a large space from a short distance. And this is doing the job. And I'm doing it from the ground because it's easier. Why not? Why do, why do it on big stands when you can just do it on the ground? Okay, next we're gonna talk about practicals. Practicals are lights that are in the room, like a lamp. And I actually asked our set decorator to put a bunch of lamps in this room just because they look good in the frame and they give excuses to add cool lighting. So check this out, we have three lamps. And instead of using regular light bulbs that you can't control so well, I have these light bulbs from Aperture. We are going to put these bulbs in these lamps and we're going to run some power. These don't have to be powered. They, they are battery powered, but I want to run power to these lamps because I want them to just be on all day and I don't want to worry about it. So we're going to secretly run power to all of these lamps and put these bulbs in and see what we like. James, the lamp on camera left is looking a bit warm to me, even though they're all set to 4,000. Could you cool it down? Yeah, here we go. So what I'm gonna do is, I, what's cool about the app, I came in and renamed these, so I know, I just adjusted the brown lamp. Uh, the lamp on the right side, here we go, let's go into this one. All right, let's just cool this down. This is actually at 3200 in the back corner. Okay, so we can see that's definitely too yellow. Thomas, what color should I add to this? Maybe a little magenta? Sure. What we're dealing with is different colored lampshades and I, I, it's just kind of too much for me to handle. So I want them to kind of match. So we're able to quickly change the color temperature and make all of these look like they, they belong in the same world together. And I think we're at a really good starting point. We got our practicals looking good. Next, we're gonna put up a 20 foot by 20 foot of bleached muslin over the whole top. Now we're not gonna see it in camera, but this will simulate for my lighting purposes, a ceiling. And because it's opaque, I'll be able to shine light through it and get a very soft feel. It's all about controlling the soft ambience of the room. And so we're going to do that next. Steven or Andrews, Alex? Alex needs, needs a ladder too. See this? It's a giant ring of clamps. Bada bing, bada boom. Are you afraid of heights? A little bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my gosh, Thomas! So we're having a, a major problem right now. This giant piece of fabric is trying to implode our set. And as we tighten it, the walls of the set are coming together and it's about to fall down. And I don't know if we're gonna be able to make this work. So this is kind of the worst case scenario for me, just so you know. Once again, this is a disaster and I'm worried about this. Oh crap. 
Instead of clamping all of the 20 by muslin to the walls, we decided to use these big heavy duty combo stands. And it worked out great, taking the pressure off the walls. This is beautiful, check this out. So, now we have our big oh, where are you? That's where, what? Did you transport to a, 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 a psychologist's office? No, 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 no. This isn't a real room. See? But no, 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 no. You forgot. It's fake. It's fake. Oh, let's It's fake. all pretend. It's okay. Fake, okay. All right, check this out. These two things here are called strip boxes. Together, these are going to be our backlights. I just realized I'm an idiot. We actually don't need stands. We can use the walls themselves as stands. We're just gonna put a little Cardellini clamp up there and attach the light. Well, the backlights are up after a lot of work and sweat, and I'm tired. I don't know how to light this scene, and I need your help. In the comments, please let me know how would you light this scene? Would you do it this way? Or not. This is the Aperture 1200D, and I like it a lot. Sometimes when I run out of ideas, the best thing to do is to just turn on some lights. There we go. That's some bright light for you. Whoa, I need a sandbag on this thing. It's gonna fall over. Now we're putting together this eight by thing. We're gonna put some fabric on it. I'm going to grab the Aperture Spotlight with a 600X, and we are going to make it look like the light is streaming through the window, hitting one of the back walls. It doesn't look good yet. It will in a minute. Handy tip, have a monitor on set so you can run around and look at what it's doing. We've kind of realized that this, this really sucks. Um, there's a difference between bleached muslin and unbleached muslin, and we accidentally put an unbleached muslin 20 by above our set. So now everything's way too warm and it's just not looking right. So we're going to give up for now because if we stay any longer, they're gonna charge us more for our studio time. We're going to come back tomorrow morning, hopefully make it right before we shoot these ads. Everything is riding on this and if we don't get the lighting right, you might get fired from this company and never be able to make videos for them again. So anyway. The next day, we came back bright and early with a whole crew and put up the bleached muslin 20 by. Once the lighting looked great, we started to film. We started with our wide establishing shot. When the actors reached their stride and the scene was feeling well, we went in for the close-ups. When I film close-ups, I like to sweeten up the lighting, bringing in lighting modifiers and different lights it may sound counterintuitive, but to make the close-ups look like they match the wide shot, you actually have to adjust the lighting for every single angle. You've seen us set up the lighting for this, but I really wanna talk about the lighting philosophy of this setup, because that's what is informing all of these decisions. The most important decision that was made before we filmed was to have windows in this set. Now, the windows aren't actually lighting our talent, but they are giving an excuse to light the talent from the far side of their face. So you can see, we've set them up here where the windows are kind of behind them and in between them. When we go into our medium shots, the light we see in the corner of the shot is coming through and this side of his face is brighter than the other side of his face. He's looking camera right and camera right side of his face is brighter than camera left. This is the formula that you'll see in every major movie. You see a window or some light source or some evidence of a light source. You see the far side of their face is brighter than the closer side of their face. As you can see from this behind the scenes shot, we actually brought in this aperture light tube to be a sort of a backlight and then we brought in this white beadboard and shined the aperture spotlight onto it, and that was his key light. And it's at a 45 degree angle, and it's actually closer to him than the windows. It looks like the window is lighting him. But really, it's not the window, it's this beadboard. So that's the trick. When we turned the camera around and shot the therapist's close up, we did the same thing. We brought our tube light behind her. We got our beadboard on the far side of her face where the window was, 
and we shined a light on it, making that side of her face brighter than this side. Let's go over this again. We've got our key light coming from their far side. So when we come into the close-ups, we magnify that key light. We make sure their face has some dimensionality to it. I exaggerate the image by bringing in a backlight. And now these medium shots appear to match the wide shots. If I would not have done that additional lighting for these close-ups, they wouldn't have looked very good. The reason why we filmed the wide shot first is because it gives us an opportunity to establish the lighting and the mood for the scene to make sure it's just right. Also, the a lot of times directors like to film the wide first because it takes a while for the actors to really get into a rhythm and to get the blocking down just right. And they're able to tweak the scene and make sure they're really happy with everything on the wide. Once that wide is really flowing well, then we go in for the close-ups. And my goal on the close-ups is to make people look attractive, make them look good for, for an ad like this. I really want people to look nice, but it's to also match the same mood as the wide, to have it sit, sit in the same world. So if the key light all of a sudden for the close-ups was coming from the another side, they wouldn't match. I would also like to say that the pre-production time on this was really essential. Uh, we had our set designer draw a mock-up of the set and we chose the colors of the walls. There's actually a show called Bad Therapy. And we looked at some of those images and said, ah, this like olive green tone is perfect for our walls. So we, we stole that. Now this wide shot, great, it looks okay. It's, it's a decent wide shot, but I would say that these close-ups look really nice. And the reason why they look nice is because of the set design, because of the, the planning that went into where the light is coming from. And that's basically it. If you liked this video, please do not subscribe to Epic Light Media. We do not need any more subscribers. However, you should subscribe to Dave Mays. He's doing incredible things on YouTube and he actually cares about every single video he makes. He deserves your subscription.